Hi guys, Brian from oldcamreview.com. Uh, I have a review for you today. It's the Zeiss Icon Netar uh, camera. It's an old folding camera, circa 1930s, 1940s. Um, the, the Netars were made in the 30s and 40s, up, up, up right up to about, I think, close to 1950, if not. But um, It's an old folding camera, 120 film, uh, which is really nice. 120 film is still available. Uh, today you can use it, you don't have to modify the camera, you don't have to do anything like that. Uh, you can just actually go out, get film, put it in here and start shooting. Uh, the deal with this camera though, it's a 6x9, so uh, your negative is actually going to be pretty much right about there. It's going to be sort of a wider uh, negative than a standard uh, medium format where you get the square uh, negative right there. That would be a standard like you know, twin lens reflex or something like that. Uh, so you get a little bit larger negative, which is good in some ways. Uh, we have the larger negative, but on the negative side is you get less shots per roll. Uh, so you're going to only get eight shots per roll on 120 film with a 6x9 as opposed to 12 that you would get in a um, 4x5. Um, so, but uh, yeah, nice old camera. Um, Pretty well made. Zeiss uh, had a you know a huge sort of dizzying array of uh, of cameras in their line. Uh, this was definitely an entry level model. Uh, this was sort of like the bottom. Not the, well, yeah, I would say entry level. I wouldn't say it's a poor quality or a bad camera. What they you know the quality of the body and I think is the same all the way up to the line. I think where you sort of would have uh, any you know differences in quality. Unfortunately, is in the lens, or the, or the you know the shutter mechanisms and stuff like that. Uh, the lens on this is a Novar uh, Anastigmat uh, 105 millimeter f 6.3 lens. So we're not doing any real well light shooting with this camera. But um, I've looked on Flick River, and I actually just I just finished a roll with this, so I'm going to get it developed. I haven't seen any uh, pictures out of it, but the stuff I've seen uh, ranges considerably from really just kind of meh. To, you know, but you know, has a nice feel and tone to it. Nothing super sharp. Although you know, if people take the time and you and you set this this camera up and you maybe measure your distances and do stuff like that and spend the time with the camera, I think you can get some really nice results. I've seen some actually really really nice results out of this camera. Uh, check on FlickRiver.com. That's always my advice if you really want to see what a camera is capable of. See what photographers are doing with it right now, and you're going to get a better idea of. Uh, of what the the, cam the camera can do. Uh, this particular one's in very nice shape. Um, I haven't detected any holes or anything like that. Um, the body's in, in great shape. I actually got this camera at the Photographica show uh, for the New England uh, 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 New England Historical Photographic Society. I bought it at an auction there, uh, and the camera's in great shape. Um, and there are some other nice features on this camera here. There's a little uh, flip up stand here so you can actually set the camera and put it on a table and use your table as a tripod so you don't actually necessarily have to have a tripod you just have to have a flat surface to hold it again you're not going to get the adjustability that you would get uh, with a tripod another nice thing though is there are tripod mounts in this there's one here on the actual door itself and then there's another one on the spindle take up uh, side of the camera um, my understanding is is this won't actually fit in a standard tripod socket. Uh, the uh, tripod screw won't fit in here. You might need to get an adapter or, or kind of jerry-rig something. But uh, there are two, two tripod mounts available for it, uh, so you, you can set it up that way. It's in this nice little carry handle, so if you wanted to carry it around with you, you certainly could do that. I, I wouldn't do it. I don't know how durable the leather is after, you know, 60 years or, or so. Um, uh, this camera I th really was mount meant to sort of like be shot like a regular sort of SLR style. It's got a flip-up uh, uh, view screen. It's you know certainly not coupled, and there's no range finder or anything like that. Um, but it does the the, uh, the glass in here is you know uh, is is set up to to give you the same sort of field of view as uh, the camera would be seen. So it is magnified uh, a little bit. Um, the shutter speeds on this range here, how accurate they are, we're not quite sure at this point. Uh, but <laughs> shutter speeds range from bulb. Uh, to 25th, 75th, and a 200th of a second. Uh, and again, the aperture goes from a uh, whoppingly huge 6.3 to 
F32. Uh, everything I've seen in red says, you know, sort of like the middle of the range is a sweet spot for this lens between, you know, F8, 11, and 16, somewhere around there. Uh, wide open, I think you might have some some issues, you know, uh, doing that. Uh, again, since it's not a rangefinder and the lens is not coupled to anything, it is a uh, zone focusing uh, camera. So, you know, you have to figure out or measure how many feet you are from uh, from your subject. Um, and it is, it goes from, it's actually in meters on this one. So uh, two and a half meters, three meters, four meters, five meters, eight, uh, 15 to infinity. Um, and you know, so you just kind of sort of need to figure out where you are in that, um, and you know, set set your focal distance, set your aperture. Since you're dealing with such small apertures, <coughs> you you actually could make up and uh, get some some decent uh, uh, decent shots. But your shutter speed is going to be your limiting factor here. So camera shake and stuff are, are definitely not your friend. Um, but uh, again, you know, uh, you know, it's meant to be used like this. So it would, and it's a manual cock shutter. So you would take here and you just manually flip that and then that would you have your actually your shutter release here which in, engages it through a number of manual link, linkages and then there you go you flip it so there you go you cock your shutter take your picture cock your shutter take your picture so yeah it's an all manual camera I mean all your controls are right here focus uh, this is going to be your uh, shutter speed uh, this is your, your shutter cocking and then you have your aperture setting right here. There is actually um, a, a PC flash attachment uh, so you can put you know external flash on it and there is a remote shutter release uh, adapter here so you can have your have your plunger <coughs> and work with it that way. Um, nothing you really need to do on this. A lot of the, uh, the old folding cameras you have to slide stuff and move stuff. Not on this. It's pretty much all set uh, for your focal length and when you want to close it up you just press here this folds back and then clicks into place. So, and then when you want to open it again, on the right hand side where you think that the shutter should be, where it normally is, you press that, that pops open here, then you would cock your shutter and then take your picture. Um, so it's actually nicely set up, it's not bad. Um, it's probably one of the uh, fairly easy camera to use. On the back here, since there's no uh, double exposure uh, locking mechanism or like that, you have to slide that open and you'll see on your film the film counter so you know where, where where to wind and where to stop your film winder is right here on the side a little key tab so you would just turn that until um, you know if you're going from your first frame it goes up and we'd see number one and then when you're done you turn it to the second frame take your picture onward and, and so on and so forth <clears throat> um, not much else really sort of to talk about the camera it's nicely built and it, it's fairly solid camera it's not too heavy I mean it's 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 heavy enough. It's I, I gotta say it's probably a little heavier than my uh, Fuji X100, um, <laughs> but uh, it's you know it's just a little bit bigger than that. It's nice and thin. It's easy. It's light. Uh, really nice look to it though. I really like the chrome and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> on the top here, if you want to open up the camera, there's a little sliding switch and that pops the um, that that pops the back and then you can open it up here and you can see all the bellows folded up nicely here. This is your uh, feed or take up. Uh, spool here and uh, you know you would just switch that uh, to start rolling your film but very uncomplicated camera really not much to uh, not much to it you can see right down in there how the the bellows expand and all that stuff uh, pretty cool stuff but uh, yeah so I'm kind of dying to see some uh, some some photos out of this other than the ones that I've seen on the web uh, can't wait to get uh, my roll processed and and see how we do on it um, and uh, I'll see if I can post some examples of my uh, photographic ability isn't too shabby and, and the pictures come out uh, halfway decent at least enough for critique so uh, yeah so I, I've seen these ranging you know anywhere from you know if you go to like you know a thrift store or something from you know five ten dollars up to you know I, I'd say around a hundred dollars uh, the more you pay the better lens you can get I know there was some nicer lenses available for this I would recommend you know getting the best you can um, for you know for the money I wouldn't go crazy spending a ton of money on one of these but uh, certainly a nice camera to have around and uh, it's nice to have you know some Zeiss stuff in your collection so uh, if you're a collector and you want something that says Zeiss on it this is not a bad way in and a very cool camera looks great on the shelf uh, good uh, good camera to take out too it's not too uh, not too heavy where you'd have a problem lugging around it's not a four by five and you can uh, certainly get some looks and uh, it's a great conversation starter when you're out shooting so. Uh, a lot of fun stuff to be done with the, uh, the medium format stuff. So, anyway, that's it. 
Brian, oldcamreview.blogspot.com or oldcamreview.com. Um, and this is the Zeiss Icon Netar.